Okay, welcome back. Today we have some fantastic guests with us. Seth Reed and Mason Day from Grow It. Rich, hey. I'm so excited to yeah. have these two. Hey, guys. Hey, Seth hey, and hey, Mason. How are we doing? Great, pretty great. Hey, so you guys have a company called Grow It, and I, and I see, you know, Mason has a beard. Is it, does it have to do with growing a beard? <laughs> no. Because if so, I'm in. <laughs> That was our first idea, but we, we decided that... Uh, well, it's a partnership, right? So he can grow beers and I can't. So oh, that, the drama. The losing end. All right. <laughs> we wanted to go with something that everybody can grow. So plants was what we settled on. We you know, started with the name first. I guess that's always the good idea. And yeah. you know, the more plants you have, the better you are. That's, that's where I'm at with it. Tell us about the Grow It app and what it does exactly. Uh, well, Grow It is really kind of a combination of a couple different things that are already out there um, that you might see in other spaces. So like Instagram, Yelp, you know, uh, taking pictures and getting reviews. And so what we kind of did was we thought, well, you know, if you're a beginning gardener or new to an area, uh, there's not really anything out there that's really specific to local helping you find plants that work well for you. And so we said, well, why don't we, you know, create an app with geolocation and user uploaded photos and give people a chance to rate plants and see what their neighbors are growing. And so we created Grow It. And right now we're kind of spreading the word about Grow It and telling people uh, where to find Grow It and how they can help themselves out and help their neighbors out by expressing what they're doing with their own plants. Understood. Oh, go ahead. Well, it's all about then teaching people more about plants and growing in general, but also talking about the favorite plants. So if I click, I, I go out and take a picture of a plant, and I really love it, and then I say, this is a wonderful plant, and here's why, then other people can go and see it, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Every, everybody that logs on can see everyone else's photos within 75 miles. Oh, um, oh that's how, okay. All right. That answered a question that I had in my head there. Okay. So that way people aren't seeing things that, you know, if you're, for instance, if you're in the, you know, northern Illinois area, you're not seeing anything from Florida and thinking, wow, this looks really great. Why doesn't it look that way in my garden? You're seeing things that people are growing around you, and you have the opportunity to tell those people, you know, hey, that looks really great, or maybe, hey, Ew. That thing looks like it could use some help. Ew, I don't like that plan. Wow. I think that's a great idea. It's a great idea. Why yeah. didn't anybody think of this before? Because, <laughs> I mean, to me, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, a, con a plant consumer, a lot of it is fear of, you know, or, you know, intimidation. I'm afraid, you know, or I feel like I've got a black thumb, but this can definitely, using a social tool, can... I think can help people make their decision and be more confident about mm -hmm. what plants they buy, especially within the given geographical area. That's phenomenal. So if you go to <laughs> an independent garden center somewhere and you have your app in your hand, could you look through and find your favorite plants that you clicked on that you liked? And then maybe you could find it at the garden center, right? Yeah, actually there's a, so there's a search feature. So you're walking around a garden center and you see this plant. And you look at the tag because every plant has a tag, and you're like, oh, it's like Calabricoa. I don't know what a Calabricoa is, but it's <laughs> cool. So you can look up Calabricoa on the app. You it can see cool. how people in your local area are actually rating it. Do people really like Calabricoa? Are they seeing success with it? Maybe they don't like Calabricoa in your area. So it's really easy to find great plants and see what people and other grow growers like. Well, let's let's continue to use Calabricoa as an example. And and by the way, my my daughter is actually named after Calabricoa. Her name's Callie, and she's named after that plant. So it's I, oh I really God. like that plant. You're so kidding me? Yes, that, that gets a lot of growers. Yeah, uh. that gets a lot of growers. <laughs> and but you know, taking it a step further, and I'm you know specifically thinking of Calabricoa because. That to me, that's a plant that works really well in a container, but maybe not as well in the in a in the ground or in a bed. So, does grow it have any functions to say, hey, does this work good in, in a pot or you know or both? Mm. So, so actually, uh, so what we're working on is we we kind of want you know the the horticultural industry and the experts. They always say you know X plant is great for the ground or great for a container, and we know that most of the time. You know, they're right. They, they have a job for a reason. But sometimes people find interesting uses for plants that mm -hmm. we've never really seen or maybe didn't think of. So we actually give that option to the user. And when they upload a photo, they say, you know, this is Calabricola. And if they don't know what it is, they can hit help me identify and we'll work on identifying it for them. 
But Th that they, sounds perfect. When they upload that photo, they also say where it's at. So we have the option of saying, well, it's you know it's indoors or it's in a container or it's in the ground, meaning uh, indoor it's a house plant. Right, but, right. So that way people can say, okay, well, I'm searching for something you know yellow and I want it to be in a container. And they're seeing things that are in containers that are yellow. So they can decide from there what the plants they want to use and find plants that are good for the uses they want to put them in. So they can narrow down their search by color and different, and what about sunlight or, you know, uh, yep. any other, you know, search criteria for a plant? Yeah, you do, you could do outdoor patio, indoor, so like the place where it's going, right? So there's the there's sunlight, there's, right. there's color. So any of the colors, you can log on. Shauna, what's mm -hmm. your favorite color? Uh, well, I love pomegranate. I actually got a pomegranate calabrocoa yeah. this year, you know, the big popular one that was out. And I combined it with a blue kale, and I love that blue and burgundy combination. Mm. So I would actually search blue and burgundy, I think. Mm. Okay, nice. so you could you could do that. And if anyone within 75 miles of, of wherever you're located, mm. uh, go on and search for pomegranate and blue, they might see your photo. And so... Uh. To your point, Richard, yeah, there, we, we've made it really easy for anyone with any interest in plant to log on and say, I'm just looking for something pink or pomegranate. <laughs> they don't even have to know how to spell Calabricoa or even what it is when they log on. All they have to know is, you know what, I like this shade of red, and we give them the colors to look at so there's no confusing, you know, is it lilac, is it lavender? They just pick the color that they like, they pick where they want to put it, and then they see what people are growing around them, and then they can learn about plants on their own, you know, level and how much they want to spend in it, and they can see what, you know, what's going to work for them. So I absolutely don't alien, You know, like Richard and Shauna, you already have a lot of knowledge, so certainly, like we said, is there is a search. So, since you know exactly how to spell Calabricoa, and it is challenging, I get it wrong sometimes, <laughs> you can search for Calabricoa, and then you can see information that way as well. So it's really an app that's designed for both beginning and experienced gardeners. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you know, I, I absolutely love this. And, and I know, and I try to put myself in the consumer's shoes, I'm, you know, being in the wholesale greenhouse business and also in the retail garden center business, I talk to a lot of customers and a lot of consumers. So I know what they're looking for. I know, I know what their fears are. I know what they're, you know, what they're not asking as well, but, you know, just from being around it so long. And I think this app takes a lot of those fears and intimidations away from the novice or average. And even for the expert gardener, I could see how they can maybe use it to hone their, you know, maybe if they're a collector and they might be finding some unique things. So, you know, I think it's absolutely great, and I am, I'm, uh, you know, anticipating this taking off. And, and as a as a garden center person, I'm looking forward to seeing consumers coming in and using this and saying, "Hey, you know what? I saw this on the Grow It app. Do you have it?" Because it also can help us plan for what you know. I think people are looking for, and you know, we might learn something new and say, "You know what? A lot of people like yellow. We better have more yellow plants available for the mm. local consumer." And with the geographical location, uh, you know, from these smartphones with the app. We know that that's what our market wants. So, you know, I'm just hoping, is it available on iPhone and Android? Yes. yes. Woo -hoo. Right. That means I'm in. Um, I have an Android. And I'll, I have to tell you the truth. I tour uh, all over the country. I have my cell phone with me. That's natural. I garden, and I have my cell phone with me every minute. So I'm so addicted to tech uh, that yeah. I have it. I always have it in my Guilty. back pocket, and uh, I'm always pulling it out to take a picture, to, to ask help from friends, to do all that. So I think that um, it, not only am I at the garden centers with you know an app in hand, I would certainly be in the garden ready to take a picture. And I've asked around at other gardeners, and not just um, crazy addicted gardeners like me, but the average people that I've talked to that you know has a smaller garden, and they're also carrying their phones with them all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I think it's a it's a great tool. Well, well, thanks. And one of the things that we have discussed for a long time is is that um, a lot of times, you know, your hardcore gardeners feel that you should just leave your technology home, right? Like you leave it inside, you go out, you garden, you get your hands dirty, and then you remove technology. But a lot of the people we talk to, people our age, yeah. my phone goes everywhere with me. Oh, like, yeah. 
kitchen. If it's not in my room. pocket, I, I I'm worried. I get worried. <laughs> Where is it at? My phone. Where's my phone? Where's my yeah. phone? Uh -huh. and so we wanted, you know, we had to have something digital, and we we, we wanted to create an app because everyone has a smartphone. There's some that don't have smartphones. I apologize. Uh, uh, but, you know, majority of the population has okay. a smartphone that easy access okay. to an app. I have an invention. So, I, I need you to invent a telephone condom because <laughs> I'm taking my phone to the garden all the time and I get it covered in dirt. In total seriousness. I don't want to make any, oh, make any plugs for any specific <laughs> phone makes or models. But uh, actually, I, I think that one's already out of the bag. I think... What is it? Samsung has a uh, has a couple new phones out now that they call them. Uh, oh, they're waterproof. The S the S fives, yeah, I think. Yeah. Resistant. I have yeah. a Samsung and it is not waterproof, and so uh, and, and neither is it dirt proof. So <sighs> it is a real serious issue in the garden. And yeah. my husband gives me such a hard time all the time. You know, it's covered in dirt and mud all the time. Hey, uh, I live in the modern era and I'm a gardening gal. That's the way it's going to be. <laughs> I think as we go forward, we'll see smartphones become more resistant or or become cheaper because as they you know we well, when the iPhone first came out people were standing in line paying what six seven hundred dollars mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yes but, you know people can't shell out that amount of money you know every six months for the new version so I think we'll be seeing you know things become more durable and or you know the price come down to replace I, I agree but I have to tell you if there was a chip invented that you could put in my head that would make all of this uh, uh, possible you know by my mind I would do it yeah. that's how addicted I am to social <laughs> media to tech <laughs> she's gonna be wearing Google glasses I'll be a in the Borg. garden yeah. it's gonna happen I, I love it every minute of it and uh, so is the grow it app free to download Yes, 100% free. We love the 100% okay. free. Okay, so it's available on iPhone and Android. It's yep. free. It yeah. takes it takes the intimidation factor out of gardening. It shows pretty colors, I so mean, you can choose. My <laughs> goodness, <laughs> I can't think of anything wrong with this app. So the Grow It app, it's available on the iTunes Store and the Android Marketplace. Did I get that right? Wow, look at you. You're all techie stuff. I know about these things a little bit. <laughs> and... You know, so the background of Grow It, though, I mean, how did you guys start? Because, Seth, I knew you before Grow It. You were you used to sell me seeds from Burpee. You were my Burpee sales rep. I did. I tried really hard. You you bought some. I did buy a little. Um, yeah, I... Um, You're the Burpee dude. Working, you sold me Burpee. Uh, I've been in the industry for seven years or 15, and I got out of college. I was working for this top breeder and going around the country and selling to retailers, working with consumers. And the whole time I'm thinking, you know, with all these consumers I'm interacting with is like, there's got to be something to make it easier because all my friends think I'm a big dork and they don't know anything about plants. We still do. Shauna nodded her head in agreement. <laughs> Mason, I think we're, we're, yeah, you're getting teamed up on here, oh, Seth. Oh, no. So anyways, we're going to continue on. So <laughs> I was searching for ideas, right? And I am I was only getting so far. And then Mason started working for the same company. And he was doing the social media for some brands like Wave and, and, and Burpee Home Gardens. Mm -hmm. And he just had all this energy. He, you know, this got out of college. I'm going to change the world. He knew social media. And I don't I don't think social media at all. Oh. So I was like, dude, let's, let's go out and have beers. So we we're doing this after work beer thing every other week, just brainstorming and trying to come up with ideas. And then we uh, then we landed in Kansas City. Yeah. So about I think it's almost about a, a year exactly a year ago. A year. We got Champagne. we were at a trade show for an industry event and we got stranded in Kansas City. Uh, the polar was, vortex. Yeah, was, remember? Oh yeah. Yes, yes. Canceled all the flights and uh, I had to get a rental car with this guy and ride from Kansas City all the way back to Chicago. I think it's like eight, in a eight blizzard. Eight Holy cow. <laughs> And so, you know, we had already kind of, we had already been talking for about six months, seven months about, you know, how do we get more people interested in gardening? How do we bring the younger generations into gardening? How do we get everybody involved? And so we had already been talking and we hadn't really thought anything groundbreaking. And so we're in this car ride and all of a sudden, like, you know, we start, we got nothing else to do but talk about, you know, work. And so then he goes, hey. Can you get on one of those apps and see where we should stop for, uh, you know, bites to eat? And I said, oh, you know, Yelp, you mm -hmm. know, kind yes. of a household name now, Seth. 
And he goes, hey, yeah. And uh, so I said, okay. So we're looking and kind of looking at restaurants. I said, you know, there's reviews for everything. You can find reviews for, you know, anything from a restaurant to and then you look at consumer reviews for electronics. You can even find a review for a babysitter. And so I said, why aren't there reviews for plants? Why, oh, why aren't genius. Thoughts? And so genius. it was like, boom, yeah. light bulbs, explosions. And so we spent the next, I think it was probably six and a half hours talking about what, you know, what would this, something like this look like? And, you know, then it got back to the office and we spent the next three months really kind of pinpointing what something like this would become. And yeah, then, then we, we pitched the idea and we got funding for it. And then we produced something this summer, got out in front of uh, this actually list last Did you guys go on Shark Tank and Mark Cuban get behind you or what? <laughs> uh, no, you know, it's, it's, we, we, we stayed within the industry. We, uh, the, the same breeder that we worked for, um, you know, believes in innovative ideas. And so we got funding mm-hmm. from them uh, for this crazy the idea of this app and then got it out there got a lot of feedback uh tried a lot of different things and then uh we went and did more development and so here we are you know it, both ver- uh the android and the ios is out on the store it's finished it's done it's fun exciting it's beautiful um and so that's that's how it that's how it came about this is going to be a good year for you absolutely. guys absolutely yeah. i will say that it's grow it is is never a a completed project. It's never a complete product because we are always trying to stay at the top of our game and, you know, really listen to what people want. We give the people what they want. And if, you know, if there's a feature that we're missing, you know, we're always looking at how do we incorporate that and to make grow it better. Mm-hmm. Well, you guys are definitely on your way and, and we're behind you a hundred percent, you know, being in the, in this industry and we feel like it's, it's something that is, uh, going to affect every human being on the planet and, you know, whether they know it or not. And you guys are only going to help that next generation. We talk about this probably on every single show mm. about how we need to get the next generation of gardeners educated and feeling confident about gardening. And this app is definitely going to speak to that next generation. And uh, to be honest with you, you know, uh, you know, my parents are uh, you know, a little bit older in their their generation, they're using apps too. So I think this is, you know, this isn't just for a young generation. It is it is throughout the you know the entire population, and people are going to start to to use these tools. And it's a tool that's at your fingertips. It's you uh, if you already own a smartphone, which the the you know the majority of okay. consumers have one, especially in the United States, then you can actually. Utilize this free tool that you know mm-hmm. you've already got the you've already got the phone. Just download the app, and uh, and start using it. And 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 you know I'll I'll admit I've been using it uh, for about uh, almost a year now since you guys first approached me about it. And uh, now you know we're in April of 2015, so I think it was maybe April of 2014 when Seth gave me a call yeah. to use it before it was kind of live. And uh, at first I thought this is a great concept. But there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And then to see where you guys have taken it to now, and I think mm-hmm. this is exactly, you guys are going in the right direction. And like Mason said, it should never be done. It's like anything. You're always going to improve it. Um, you look at any of the big uh, startups that became something. And Plus, it's fun. Uh, you know, when you're talking about the consumer who, you know, w- we know what the, from a marketing perspective, um, who this is touching. This is, you know, I see ladies walking around the garden center all the time with a phone in their hand. Oh, yeah. And that, you know, <laughs> taking pictures, trying to decide what to get. Looking and, at a product review or yes. trying to compare the price at another it, store. Of course. It happens a lot. Of course. And so I think that this is, you know, specifically built for, the, you know, eyeballing the beauty and then being able to make a better choice. I'm so glad that you guys came on with us so that we could do a little chat about what how it really works. It seems so easy to use. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're, we're glad that we're, uh, you had us on yeah. and, uh, certainly anyone can find it on the, uh, the iTunes store and Google play, uh, grow it one word. Yep. And, um, you know, if, if, you know, Sean and Richard, you guys go on and, mm-hmm. you know, you already have your profiles. Uh, anyone that's watching this can then search you guys out and search us out and start seeing some, uh, some inspiration for mm-hmm. gardener gardening around. The Terrific. Country. I'm that's on it. I'm going to have to spend that's... the whole time this summer in my garden, taking pictures and sharing. Puts a little pressure on you. You know, <laughs> people are now, you know, 
they're going to be looking for those photos, and if they're not up to snuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I think the now my profile is the Elsip Nursery profile. I think I've got some of the best pictures on oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah. And some of those pictures are, are from my house. <laughs> it's now uh, there's a competition. It's a competition, is what it is. Well, we'll decide. Yeah. All everyone, right. Well, right. thanks, thanks we'll again, up. gentlemen. <laughs> for being a part of the show and um, we're going to have you back sometime and we'll see yes, you soon. Absolutely. Thanks guys. Thanks for All right. Happy gardening. Download the Grow It app. Absolutely. And uh, we'll be back after a few messages for our next segment. to stop garden insects before they become a problem? Bonite All Seasons Horticultural Spray is your answer and will stop your garden insects before they hatch. Early spring smothers most insect eggs left behind by last year's plant destroying insects. Bonite's All Season Horticultural Spray Oil will destroy insect eggs in early spring and if used throughout the season, will control all stages of insects. Bonite All Season Spray Oil is recommended for use on shade trees, fruit trees, shrubs, roses, and ornamental plants. Bonite All Season Horticultural spray oil is easy to use and an all natural product that can be used all season long. Bonite products are family made in America. All Seasons Horticultural spray oil is available at your local hardware store, garden center, or farm feed store, or go to bonite.com for a retailer near you.